What we will do first is draw a picture that represents the given information. The man at point P is walking due north, so we can extend a line in this direction. And for now, we're just gonna call that distance X. And then due east of point P, there was a woman who was walking south, so she's gonna be going this way, and we're gonna label that distance as Y for now. And the question says, at what rate are the people moving apart 15 minutes after the woman starts walking? Now, this phrase, people moving apart, indicates a distance between the people. So if we take this point where the man is standing and this point where the woman is standing, or I guess walking, and we connect them with another line, that would be the distance between the people. And it's the rate of change in that distance that we are looking for. So we're going to call that distance between the walking individuals Z. And if you look carefully, we're forming a nice right triangle. I don't know if it's nice, but it is a right triangle. And we can express that right triangle or draw that right triangle accordingly. So we're just going to connect some points together here. And in green there, you have a right triangle. This angle here is the right angle. Now we need to kind of figure out some values to attach as labels for that right triangle. Let's do that right now. We know that the woman was 500 feet due east of point P. So that distance right there is 500, and that means that this distance here is also going to be 500. So we'll make sure that we label that accordingly. And then since the distance from here to here has been represented as y, then the distance from here to here will also be y. Perhaps it's helpful if we redraw the right triangle on the side. And again, the base of the right triangle is 500. The hypotenuse is going to be Z. And then the other leg of the triangle, look back at this picture, you can see that that leg is going to be X plus Y. Very good. Now, because it's a right triangle, we know that we could apply the Pythagorean theorem to relate X plus Y, 500, and Z. So that's what we're going to do next, is use the Pythagorean theorem. We would know that the hypotenuse squared would equal the sum of the legs squared. So we would have x plus y squared plus 500 squared. Now, once you have your equation set up, what you need to do next is differentiate this equation with respect to time. And so we know that because this is a related rates problem. We have people moving at different rates. We're asked to calculate a rate of change in the distance between the people. So it's a related rates problem. We have to differentiate with respect to time. For example, for z squared, we would apply a power rule as well as a chain rule. So the derivative of z squared would be 2 times z to the power of 1, and then the chain rule requires us to multiply by the derivative of our variable with respect to time. So please don't forget to multiply by the derivative of your variable with respect to time in these problems. We go to the next term, same kind of idea, we have a power rule, so we drag that power in front, we're going to recopy the inside here that x plus y would now be raised to the power of 1 because we subtracted 1 from the power, and then we multiply by the derivative of our inner function here. Now, the derivative of 1x would be 1, and then chain rule says, please remember to multiply by the derivative of your variable with respect to time. So dx dt plus the derivative of 1y, which would be 1, times the derivative of that variable with respect to time. And then we get to the 500 squared. Now 500 is a constant in this problem. The derivative of any constant with respect to time would be zero. So you really just have plus zero there, which we don't even need to write, of course. Now, we look at this, we can simplify because we have a two in the left-hand term and a two on the right-hand term. Divide both sides of the equation by two and that would cancel. Great, now remember, we're solving for dz dt. That would be the rate of change in the distance between the two walkers, and that's not so easy yet because we have to plug in x, y, z, and then dx, dt, and dy, dt. So we have to start thinking about what these values are. Let's take a look at our triangle once again. And in particular, let's try to first figure out what x was. Now remember, x was the distance that the man had traveled northward starting at point P. That was x. And to get that distance, we have to think about how long the man was walking. Now you go back up to the given information, and it's a little tricky because you see a couple of different time values listed. The woman started walking five minutes later. So that means that the man was just sort of walking on his own for five minutes. 
and then another 15 minutes had passed as well. So for the man, the five minutes and the 15 minutes amounts, of course, to 20 total minutes of walking. So what we can do is as follows. We can say that the distance X would be the 20 minutes. Now we're gonna to wanna to convert that into seconds. So of course we could just multiply by 60 seconds per minute. That way these minutes cancel. And we did that because the man was walking at a rate of four feet per second. So we multiply by that rate and then the seconds cancel and then you're left with feet. So you can see that X turns out to be 4,800 feet. So that's the distance that the man has walked. As far as the woman, she started at her point, started walking due south, a distance of Y. She only walked for 15 minutes, remember. So you would take 15 minutes, you would multiply that by 60 seconds per minute, and then she was walking at a rate of five feet per second. So dimensionally, minutes and seconds cancel, leaving us with feet, and we work that out and we get 4,500 feet was the value of y. So that's pretty good because now we know x and y. So x plus y, of course, if we add those together, we're going to get 9,300 feet. Now, once we have that dimension, we can find z by the Pythagorean theorem. So we plug the lengths into the Pythagorean theorem. You'd probably want to pick up a calculator here and simplify the right-hand side. And there you have it. And then you want to take the square root on both sides to solve for z. So there is our value of z. We also want to think about what dx dt was and what dy dt was, but we know those. Remember, dx dt was basically the rate of change in the distance the man was walking. So dx dt was that rate of four feet per second. That was for the man. For the woman, her rate, dy dt, was a little bit faster. It was five feet per second. So we have everything we need to plug into the equation that we had derived earlier, which was all the way back here. So we're gonna take our data and plug into this equation next. And there is every value that we obtained earlier plugged in, now just divide both sides of the equation by the square root of that crazy number, and that is going to give you your answer. We cancel it out, and now here we have our dz dt. If you work out the numerator, you're going to have that 9300 times 9, which is 83,700. And then in the bottom, you could get a little fancy here, because you could split that up into the square root of 8674, times the square root, let's see, one, two, three, four zeros, so 10,000. Of course, the square root of 10,000 is just 100. So actually, this is just 100 here. And then that's nice, because then you can reduce by canceling those two zeros and those two zeros right there. So just a little bit of fancy tricks there gives us 837 over the square root of 8674. This is a measure of a rate of change in distance per unit time. So this would be measured in feet per second. And if you punch that result right there into a calculator, you could get an approximate value of about 8.99 also feet per second. So there's the approximate answer. And right here is the exact answer.